Hello friends and welcome to Study IQ English. I am Joy C. Joy and today we are going to continue the second chapter, second chapter of Indian Economy by Ramesh Singh. And in the second chapter, it is Growth, Development and Happiness. First part is already done. This is the second part of the second chapter. So today we will be discussing about the measurement of uh, development, how to measure development, then human development index and then the debate, the still continuing debate. And we will be discussing about what are the more wider interpretations given for development. And then we will discuss about happiness and the gross happiness uh, report. So these are the topics that we will be discussing today. So let's get started with measurement of development. In the last class, we have seen that there was a debate going on or there was actually a confusion between the economists whether growth and development is the same thing or many economists believe that with growth, development will automatically come. That is, growth leads to development. But the conclusion that we saw was that growth and development has a cause and effect relationship, which means that higher growth can lead to development, whereas it can come back. The development, high rates of development can come back in the form of higher growth as well. Then, if the growth is not turned into development, then it can have a negative impact. That is, the growth rates can come down. So, it is not an automatic process. Even if there is a growth in the country or in an economy, it does not automatically lead to development. We have seen the example of Gulf countries. Now, the conclusion as we said, automatically growth does not turn into development. A conscious effort needs to be taken. A conscious policy needs to be taken. And we have seen the role of World Bank and IMF in that perspective. Now, the second thing is, now the economists have agreed that development and growth are two different things. And they have to be achieved separately even though there is a link or a connection between them. Now the question is, how to measure this development? As we said, development is both quantitative as well as qualitative. Now, how to measure the qualitative aspects of development? How can you measure it? How can you quantify it? That was the question. So, uh, with regard to this, with regard to this question of quantification, there came up two questions. What constitutes development? What are the components of development or what constitutes development? And second one, how to quantify it? What are the components and how to quantify this components? Let's look into it closely. <coughs> now, the economists have identified the thing that the goal of progress or progress does not merely mean that there is economic growth. Progress means that beyond economic growth, there is also development. So, beyond mere increase in income, or growth, there is development. And uh, as we said, international organizations like the IMF, World Bank, etc., even the UN, all these organizations were very much concerned about the problem of development. Now came up these two questions, what constitutes development? And second one, how can we quantify this development? Now, what constitutes development? There were many answers that were coming up, like the healthcare, education, sanitation, drinking water, standard of living, then access to transportation facilities. All these are factors that constitute development. But is that the only factors? Now, if we add more and more factors, we see that they are all components of development. They all add quality to life. So whatever adds quality to life, it leads to development. So how can you restrict the number of components or what can be the precise parameters with which you can measure the development. So that was the first question. So it was very difficult to come into a consensus to agree what were that constituents that uh, together or the aggregate of the constituents that constitute the definition of development. So it was very difficult to come at a <coughs> consensus regarding what constitutes development. Now second problem was that even if you are able to arrive at a consensus even if you have concluded that these are the components or these are the factors that constitutes development how to quantify it as we said the developmental parameters they are all qualitative in nature they add quality to life they add standard of living betterment of living conditions so how can you quantify it how can you 
put it into numbers how can you turn them into absolute numbers that was the second problem now with regard to that problem the economists found out that comparison of qualitative aspects is easy now comparing indian economy with that of us economy with regard to healthcare facilities it's easy comparison is easy with that of bangladesh or sub saharan african countries it's very easy so comparison of qualitative components are easy but what is difficult is the measurement so comparison is easy but measurement is difficult that was a problem so these two problems came up and then finally to all these problems there came a solution when the human development index the hdi or the human development index was published by or when it was developed by the undp undp united nations development program the undp developed the human development report and this was in 1990 the first un Uh, dp's hdi the human development index the first one was published in 1990 so this was actually the very first attempt in order to very first attempt to define and measure the level of development of economies so the undp's hdi human development index it was the first major attempt in order to measure what we call as development in the economies and the first report the first uh, hdr human development report the report was prepared by a team which was led by mehboob ul haq so first team it was led by mehboob ul haq he is a leading pakistani economist now uh, mehboob ul haq also worked with regard to defining development in 1970s so his contributions even before the development of hdr was very high so he was the leader or he led the team for the first uh, report the human development report the first edition of the report okay in this human development report here human development the term human development is here actually a corollary to development it is used instead of development human development and development here means the same why because an economy is considered to be developed only if the population or the people living in that economy is developed if there is progress for the people in the economy the economy is considered to be developed and for that reason human development and development they were considered to be the same <coughs> the hdr the human development report it measures development by combining three indicators three indicators education health and standard of living so these are the three indicators used in order to measure the human development these three broad indicators and certain other sub indicators we will discuss about that and hdi sets a minimum and maximum for each dimension which is known as goal post now minimum and maximum there will be a value minimum is uh, the least and maximum so there will be a range within which the human development or development is measured so between the minimum and the maximum this space or this minimum and maximum the the space between them is known as the goal post and this is expressed in terms of value from 0 to 1 that is minimum is 0 maximum is 1 so for every economy on various parameters the marking is given in between 0 and 1 so marks are given between 0 and 1 which means that maximum is 1 if an economy gains a score of 1 this means in that indicator the performance of the economy is at maximum and if an economy gets a score of 0 this means that the performance of that economy in that particular parameter is the minimum so between this it is known as the goal post now let us come to three of the indicators which were the three indicators as we said they are health education <coughs> and standard of living first coming to education so education is measured by two indicators so education is a uh, indicator there are two sub indicators one is mean years of schooling So first one is mean years of schooling, and uh, it is for adult aged 
25 years that is based on educational attainment from censuses and surveys available in the UNESCO. So uh, this mean years of schooling, how is mean years of schooling calculated? So this mean years of schooling is calculated on the basis of educational attainment. How much level of education a person has attained at the age of 25, whether he has attained till the schooling, lower schooling level, high school level or graduation level. So what is the educational attainment of a person at the age of 25 that is mean years of schooling and how is data collected data is collected from various censuses and the surveys available with the UNESCO second one is expected years of schooling that is how much years a person is expected to attain the attend the educational system or the schools so what is the number of years or how much how many years would a person attend the schooling that is expected years of schooling and it is measured for children of school entering age and uh, this is this estimate this is based on enrollment by age at all levels of education and the capping of expected years of schooling is at 18 years so that this is the cap 18 years is the capping Okay, here also minimum value 0 and 1. Minimum value and maximum value is given. And uh, the values for each sub indicators are given. And the education index, that is uh, the education index under the human development report. The education index is actually the geometrical mean of both these indices. That is mean years of schooling and expected years of schooling. These are the two sub indices. So the geometrical mean of these two indices is taken in order to <coughs> calculate the education index. Now second one is the health component that is the health index. So again the health index it is measured by life expectancy at birth. Life expectancy at birth. That is at the time of birth when a person is born what is the expected years that he will live that is life expectancy at birth which means that how many years a person is expected to live at the time of his birth the calculation how many years he would live it will be based on the uh, health facilities available in the country the nutritional level that is available then birth weight of the child all these are taken into consideration so this is actually a developmental parameter we'll be able to know whether an economy or whether a country is developed enough to give a at least a minimum or a decent life expectancy to its citizens so that is a second parameter health component it is measured by life expectancy at the time of birth and it is calculated using a minimum value of 20 years and maximum value of 83.57 years. So this is the minimum and the maximum value, maximum value and minimum value. The longevity component for a country where life expectancy at birth is 55 years would be 0 0.551. So this is just uh, an example given. So, between how to convert it into between 0 and 1. So, that's uh, how this 20 years and 83.57 years will be considered as 0 and 1. 20 years, 0 and uh, 83.57 as 1. So, the value will be between 0 and 1. <coughs> Next, we have standard of living. So, standard of living component of the human development report, HDR report. It is calculated or it's measured by GNI per capita. GNI is gross national income or gross national product. Now how to find out GNI per capita that is per capita income that is gross national income or national income divided by population. So this is the formula. Formula used to calculate the GNI per capita gross national income or the gross national product per capita. Now, the parameter used here for calculating standard of living is gross national income per capita. Now, how is it calculated? It is calculated at P 
PPP that is purchasing power parity. Now what is purchasing power parity? Purchasing power parity is the comparison of different economies based on the purchasing power of those currencies of that economies based on a basket of components. Like for example, if you want to compare US and India, US has dollar as its currency and India has rupee as its currency. Now, purchasing power parity means that if a particular basket of commodities, how much dollars has to be paid in US and how much rupee has to be paid in India. So this comparison is purchasing power parity. We will be discussing about the PPP concept in detail in the external sector chapter for sure. So purchasing power parity is the base with which this GNI is calculated. GNI according to purchasing power parity. So earlier it was GDP per capita at purchasing power parity. Now it is GNI, Gross National Income or Gross National Product. Now coming to the goalpost for this, the goalpost for standard of living, that is the minimum and maximum, that is the goalpost. So the goalpost for uh, standard of living is $100 purchasing power parity, that is the minimum and uh, 87,478 dollars purchasing power parity. <coughs> that is the maximum. And the maximum of uh, per capita income or um, GNI per capita, it was estimated for the country Qatar. This was in 2012. In 2012, Qatar was the country with the highest per capita income. Now, what is GNI per capita? As we said, it's the dollar value of a currency's, sorry, of a country's final income in an year divided by population. That is a formula. So we have already learned the formula. That is gross national income divided by population will give you gross national income per capita. Now, the UNDP, United Nations Development Program, has divided the countries or has ranked the countries according to the uh, various parameters. So, what is done is the scores of the three HDI dimensions, that is three HDI dimensions, one is education, second one is the health dimension, third one is standard of living dimension. So, HDI for all these three dimensions are aggregated, that is they are added together, aggregated into a composite index. So, how is this composite index made? The composite index is made using the geograph sorry geometric mean using geometric mean now a composite index is made and based on that the countries are ranked are classified classified into three categories high human development countries medium human development countries and low human development countries these are the three classification high medium and low human development countries high human development countries are those countries with a score between 0 0.800 to 1 1 is the maximum. As we said, it is between 0 to 1. So, this is high human development countries, which indicates the country is having high level of human development. Second one is medium human development countries. That is the score of 0 0.500 to 0 0.799. And third is low human development countries with a score of 0 0.00 to 0 0.499. So, these are the three categories. High human development countries, medium human development countries and the low human development countries. So, this is uh, for your revision purpose. So, human development index and three dimensions that is health index, education and the GNI which measures the standard of living. Education and health. Health is based on life expectancy at birth. Then education based on expected years of schooling and mean years of schooling. Then standard of living based on GNI per capita. <coughs> and this was the 2020 Human Development Index. And in the 2020 Human Development Index, India had a rank of 131. This is 2020 index. Now, still the debate is continuing. What is the debate? The debate about reaching on a consensus regarding the parameters for calculating the human development. What should be the parameters included in calculating the human development? That is the debate. Still the debate is continuing and uh, uh, 
many economists and many people around the world have come up with the uh, idea that or with the suggestions that many more indicators or many more dimensions should be added to the HDI, Human Development Index or HDR. So, these are cultural aspects of an economy, outlook towards aesthetics and purity of the environment, aspects related to rule and administration that is the governance of the country, people's idea about happiness and prestige, ethical dimension of human life. So, all these are the various factors mentioned. <coughs> now, introspecting development. Now, when we come to introspection of development, that is looking into the development in a more closer way, what we understand is that life in the developed world is happy. Happiness can be said as one of the synonymous for development. We are coming into happiness as a synonym for development. Now, um, let us take a few cases mentioned in the book itself. One is one of the uh, findings by London School of Business. So, London School of Business or London School of Economics have uh, found out that Bangladesh was the most developed country and US, uh, US, uh, Norway, Sweden, they were the least developed country. Now, we know that uh, US or Sweden, all these countries are highly developed, whereas Bangladesh is less developed. Now, how did the London School of Economics come up with this conclusion? The reason is that the parameters used by them were different. For example, uh, another example given in your book is regarding good sleep. Good sleep is considered to be one of the parameters by which you can measure the happiness of a person or whether a person gets a good sleep or not. That is definitely an uh, important factor that determines the betterment or development in a human being's life. Now, how do you get a good sleep? One reason could be that if there is lesser uh, burglary or robbery or theft in a country or in a particular place, the people living in that place would be getting a better sleep. And how is theft and robbery related to? Theft and robbery is more... Uh, common in those places which are very well off where the places are much uh, prosperous. So, if a place is not at all developed, there is no prosperity, there is no wealth, there is no fear of theft and burglary. So, that people living in that area might get good sleep. So, can we say that there, high, there is a high level of development in that place? No. So, different parameters, different indicators were used by different people and that's why uh, there is different findings or outcomes for this and one of the most accepted uh, or the maximum consensus has been uh, made for the UNDP, United Nations Development Programs, HDR, Human Development Report or the Human Development Index. <coughs> so, now we are coming to the point that progress, growth or development or well-being, these are all synonyms of happiness. We can use all these instead of happiness. Happiness is a normative concept. It is a state of mind. So, for every economy, this may vary from each other. A better level of income, proper level of nutrition, healthcare facilities, proper levels of literacy and education. These resources have improved the human life. Ultimately, development can be given not only the material needs of people, it also requires uh, the non-material needs. So, non-material needs and material needs needs to be met. Only then we can say that a country is developed. Like ethics, religion, spiritualism, cultural values, all these forms development. So, development means materialistic as well as non-material needs of people are met. Now, coming to gross national happiness which we will be taking up in the next class. Uh, in detail but I'll give you an intro regarding that. The idea of gross national happiness, it was developed in a, a very small economy, Bhutan. In Bhutan's very small economy, this idea of GNH, gross national happiness was developed in 1970s and uh, the gross national happiness concept in Bhutan did not reject the idea of UNDP's um, human development index but the happiness concept was added to it. So, these were the parameters to attain happiness according to the gross happiness, national happiness, GNH, gross national happiness calculation. Higher real per capita income which measures the growth and the standard of living, 
second one is good governance third is environmental protection and the fourth one is cultural promotion these were the four aspects used now here you will see that good governance and environmental protection these two things are not included in the UNDP's in, uh, report the UNDP's human development index or the human development report but you will also see that good governance and environmental protection are given more emphasis these days environmental protection laws are given more importance again good governance is also given more importance these days <coughs> now coming to happiness world happiness report it is a Landmark survey of state of global happiness that ranks 156 countries by how happy their citizens are. So this is a report which finds out uh, how happy the citizens of various economies are. And the latest one is 2021 report. It has measured and it has ranked the countries on the basis of certain parameters. That is six parameters are used. GDP per capita, social support, healthy life expectancy at birth, freedom to make life choices, generosity, perception of corruption. So these are the parameters used. We will be discussing about these parameters in detail in the next class. About the happiness report also in detail in the next class. I hope this was a useful video for you. Thank you so much for watching. Wishing you all the very best.